Hello there. I am back to read you some more of this awesome book, Steph Soto, Taco Queen by Jennifer Torres. I hope you all have been enjoying it as much as I have. So the last time I read, a few big things happened. First of all, so Steph and her friend Amanda won the, con the tickets to the Viviana Vega concert, but we still don't know if Steph's uh, poppy and mommy are going to let her go. So hopefully we'll find that out now. Um, and then second of all, the city uh, sent out a letter saying that they're going to change some of the regulations and the rules for food trucks such as Tia Perla. So we'll see what happens with that. And then finally, when we left off chapter 12, uh, Steph and the other students were trying to think of ways to raise money so they could buy more school supplies or art supplies rather. Um, and one of the ideas Julia had, which seemed, which everyone seemed to enjoy, was hosting a school dance and then, you know, maybe charging a few dollars to get in and raising money that way. So let's continue, shall we? Chapter 13. Outside in the parking lot, Tia Perla is missing again. That's two days in a row. Not to jinx anything, but this feels like a good sign. When I get to the gas station, Poppy is helping someone at the window, so I let myself into the cab to drop off my backpack. There, on the middle of the bench seat, is a small package wrapped in the comic section of a newspaper. Taped to the top is a tag with my name printed across it in block letters. Curious, I peel the paper away and find a cell phone. I turn it over, part of me thinking it might be a toy. But no, it's real. I can't believe it. I had wanted one for my last birthday, but didn't even think it was worth asking. It's not as nice as Julia's, but still, it's a phone. It seems to be mine, and it's not even my birthday. What could have prompted a gift like this? I'm trying to make sense of it when I remember that Julia's parents gave her a phone for safety reasons, so she could check in with them when she gets to school and when she makes it back home. My heart starts thudding. Is that why mommy and poppy got me a phone so I can check in with them from the concert? I leap from the cab, run around to the back of the truck, pull open the kitchen door, and throw my arms around poppy's waist as he's sprinkling cheese on an order of tacos. Thank you, thank you, thank you! I squeal as he hands the dish through the window to the customer below. I can't believe this is actually happening! Poppy thanks the customer with an apologetic smile, then turns around to face me. Mia, I'm so glad you're happy, he says, grinning. Happy? This is the best day ever! I have to tell Amanda. And don't worry, everything's going to be fine. You could trust me. Poppy's smile droops at the corners. Trust you? Amanda's sister will take us straight to the arena, and she'll pick us up right after. You'll hardly even notice I'm gone. And of course, I'll have the phone. I'll check in as many times as you want, I scream. I can't wait until Saturday. Wait, Miha, wait. Poppy starts, but I'm too excited to listen. I wish I could tell Amanda right this second. Wait, I have a phone. I can. Poppy puts his hands on my shoulders. Miha, please stop. Oh no, my stomach goes hollow. It's like your mommy said the other night. He's almost whispering. We think you're just too young for this. Maybe in a few years. But for now, we wanted you to have something special. This phone is a privilege. You've earned it. You have to keep it turned off during the school day, of course. And we don't want you calling your friends late at night. But we trust you. Plus, this way, if there was ever an emergency, I had stopped listening, but that catches my attention. It's not even for me, it's for you. So you could keep hovering. My heart is still racing, but now it's thump, thump, thump is low and furious. My eyes sting. I push Poppy, jump down from the truck and take off, dropping the cell phone on the pavement. Poppy yells, Estefania, Steph, wait, but I don't stop. After a few minutes, I hear him start the engine to follow me. It doesn't take him long to catch up, but when I hear Tia Perla's horn, I don't stop. I don't even turn around. I keep walking, 
Tia Perla crawling along behind me until I realize with irritation that I can't make it all the way home from here. I have nowhere to go. I'm stuck with Tia Perla. I stop and slump down on the curb. There's no way I can get back in that truck. Not yet. Poppy opens his door. He'll come sit down. His voice will be gentle. He'll try to make me feel better. Or maybe he'll tell me this has gone on long enough and drag me back into the truck. He does neither. Instead, he walks around to the kitchen. I hear him opening the doors and pulling drawers. Then there's a minute, to a requi- minute or two of quiet before he gets back into the cab and just sits there. I guess it's up to me to end the standoff. I swipe my hand across my teary face, get up, and open the door without a word and without looking at Poppy. On my seat is a skinny foil packet. I know without opening it what I'll find. A tortilla rolled up with a butter with butter inside. Just looking at it makes me want to cry again. So I shove it aside and slam the door shut. The next time Amanda asks me about the concert, I just shake my head and she understands. You don't even want my mom to try calling them, she asks. It won't help, I say. Arthur gives me a poster that had been stapled inside one of his magazines. It's a blown up picture of Viviana Vega performing at a concert, hundreds of arms reaching for her as she strides across the stage. That's the last time either of them bring up Viviana Vega for the rest of the week. So she can't go to the Viviana Vega concert. Did you see that coming? Is that what you predicted or no? It's not what I predicted. I thought she was gonna be able to go, but let's continue. Chapter 14. On Saturday, the day of the concert, I hear Monty and Poppy in the kitchen getting ready for the farmer's market. I don't get up to join them. I don't plan to leave the house. I might not even leave the bedroom. Still, I'm a little surprised when neither of them comes to wake me and Poppy drives off on his own. It's after 10 o'clock when I finally get out of bed. I stretch and yawn and bury my bare toes in the shaggy brown carpet. I reach for the glass of water on my dresser and notice a cell phone sitting on top of it. I haven't seen it since that afternoon at the gas station and figured it was lost or broken or both. Poppy must have snuck it inside my room overnight. For a second, I'm embarrassed about my taco truck tantrum. Then I look up at Arthur's Viviana Vega poster taped to my wall and realize this is as close as I'm ever going to get to her. My eyes start to water all over again. I take down the poster, open up my desk, and pull out a sheet of drawing paper and a box of colored pencils. I do whatever, I do, I, I do what I always do when I feel like drawing, but don't know where to start. Spill the colored pencils over my desk, close my eyes, and pick a color without looking. Orange. Orange like a carrot? Meh. Orange like the sun? Maybe. Orange like a blaze of angry flames? That's it. I start drawing. Orange flames. Shooting out from a rocket? No. Not in a rocket, but a flying taco truck. I roll my eyes. Not even in my imagination can I ditch old Tia Perla. But maybe, at least in my drawing, she'll fly out of my life for good. Soon, cottony blue clouds swirl above Tia Perla on the page, and beneath her, bright green vines with with tendrils stretch to catch hold of her tires but don't quite reach. Here and there, yellow birds and purple butterflies dart over and under the flaming truck. After what seems like only a few minutes, I hear a cautious knock on my bedroom door. I look over at the clock. More than an hour has passed since I started drawing, and by now, my page is nearly filled and screaming bright. Yes, I answer. Mommy comes in and stands over my shoulder. Miha, it's beautiful, she says. It's Tia Perla, no? I guess. If she's trying to make me feel better, it's going to take a lot more than that. She sits down on my bed and smooths the quilt with her palms. Steph, I know you're angry. Whatever. I'm not going to make this easy for her. And what I'm about to say is going to make you even angrier. 
What? Not possible. I spin around in my chair to look at her in the eye. The assistant manager just called in sick, and they've asked me to fill in at the store. It's a good opportunity, Steph, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to drop you off with Pappy and Tia Perla so I can go to work. You still have a few hours before we need to leave. She has to be kidding. There's no way that, on top of missing the Viviana Vega concert, I'm going to spend my Saturday with Tia Perla. Why can't I just stay here? I'm sick of you treating me like a baby, and I'm really sick of that stupid taco truck. Mommy raises an eyebrow, but not her voice. She takes one of my pillows and hugs it in her lap. I know you think we're being overprotective, but can you imagine what it was like for us, for your poppy and me, when we first got here? We were older than you, but not by much. We didn't speak the langu language. We knew almost no one. We had almost nothing. Can you imagine what it's like to settle down in a place where you feel so lost? To send a child into a world that still seems so far from home? But, I start to interrupt her, the world might be a big and scary place to them with their just good enough English, but that's not me. Mommy shushes me with a pat on, with a pat on the hand. She stands up then finds my hairbrush on the dresser and holds it out to me. As for that taco truck, she helps pay for those pencils in your desk, those books in your backpack, that uniform in your closet, and that paint in your art box. Have some respect for, for poor Tia Perla, Estefania. She's an important part of this family, and she will be gone, and she will be for a long time if we're lucky. Lucky? Not the word I would use. But it's no use arguing. I get dressed and pulled my hair into a ponytail. Chapter 15 We catch up with Tia Perla at the flea market. She looks the same as ever, of course, but something about her seems different and a little unfamiliar. Her open canopy has always seemed to say, Welcome! Now it doesn't say anything. Mommy leans over to kiss my forehead, then waves goodbye to Poppy before she drives away. Here we go again, I guess. I climb inside the truck to start taking orders. When the flea market winds down and the line outside Tia Perla finally dwindles, Poppy packs up the folding chairs while I wipe down the countertop. Where to next, he asks. It doesn't seem possible, but they're the first words he said to me all afternoon. The park, I suggest? But the fields are mostly empty when we get there. We watch the first few innings of a softball game, but when no one comes to place an order, we decide to move on. It's the same at the convenience store and even at the gas station. Now what, I ask. Poppy frowns. He taps his fingertips against the steering wheel and turns right at the next signal, the commissary, I think. At least we'll be home early and I can get back to my drawing. But then he makes another turn and we're heading downtown again. What could he be thinking? We already tried the convenience store. All those downtown offices are closed for the weekend. We would have been lucky to even get a few customers this afternoon. Now, to the, now that it's early evening, there's no chance at all. It takes me a few more blocks to realize where we're going, and I don't believe it. A boulder lands in my stomach as Poppy parks Tia Perla on the narrow street between a four-story parking garage and the arena where, in just a few hours, Viviana Vega will sing for everyone but me. No, 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 no. Estefania, I'm sorry, but we really need the business. Who knows what's going to happen with these new regulations? We have to sell as many tacos as we can for as long as we can. We're lucky we even got here before anyone else did. Oh boy. So not only can Steph not go to the Viviana Vega concert, but then, she has to end up going to Tia Perla and hanging out with her dad, even though they're kind of fighting. And now her poppy wants to go sell tacos at the Viviana Vega concert, and she has to sit there and watch it? Wow. How would that make you feel? Let's find out how, uh, how Steph reacts. I'm beginning to think my parents and I must have completely different definitions of lucky this is is not lucky this 
This is a total nightmare. I can only hope that no one going to the concert notices me, the taco queen, stuck with Tia Perla. But really, how can you miss us? We serve a steady dribble of customers as the sun slowly sinks, early birds hopping for a glimpse of Viviana Vega and maybe even an autograph, desperate fans on a quest for last minute tickets, even if it means paying a fortune. A little after five o'clock, Poppy says he's going to cook the two of us an early dinner so we don't need a break when the real crowd shows up a little later. I want to tell him I'm not hungry, but the truth is I'm starving. Just thinking about one of Poppy's super burritos makes my stomach growl. I stay at my post in the window while Poppy cooks. Looking out toward the arena, I could just make out what I imagine is Viviana Vega's tour bus. I wonder what she's doing this very second. Roaming out for her show, posing for pictures with Julia Sandoval and anyone else who's actually lucky enough to have parents who don't worry so much. Just then, a customer clears her throat outside the order window. Hello? It sorrows me. I'm sorry, I guess I was kind of out of it. Can I help you? This is probably going to sound crazy, she says. But is there any chance you have anything on the menu that's Wheat-free, dairy-free, egg-free, nut-free, and meat-free? Behind me, Poppy laughs. Orle, he says. Specialty of the house. Remember Arthur and the secret menu? Mmm. I squint through the order window, half expecting to see Arthur. But it's just some lady with the hood of her sweatshirt pulled low over her forehead. Sure, we could do that, I tell her. Poppy drops handfuls of tomato, onion, and bell pepper onto the grill, then squeezes half a lemon over them, conjuring a little cloud of steam. While the veggies sizzle, he unfolds a giant lettuce leaf bigger than my hand on the countertop. He spreads layers of guacamole, then rice, then beans over it, and heaps the vegetables on top. After adding a drizzle of salsa, he rolls it up like a burrito and wraps it up in a crinkly yellow paper. I drop it into a bag along with the napkin. Four dollars, please, I say. The lady pulls a bill from her wallet and hands it to me. Thanks a ton. Keep the change, okay? She's gone before I could ask if she wants the lime wedge. I open my palm, expecting to see a five dollar bill. It's a fifty. This has to be a mistake. I open up the window as wide as I can and lean out. Wait, I shout. You left too much. But the woman just waves over her shoulder as she jogs back towards the arena. Wow, she must have really needed a burrito, I mutter. I show the bill to Poppy. Who do you think that is, first of all? Any guesses? I think I know who that woman is. His forehead wrinkles until finally he gives up trying to figure it out. Well, you heard what she said, Miha. Keep the change. You've earned it. He must be feeling really bad about dragging me out here. It's a lot of money, and I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Maybe a few more posters for my bedroom? I might as well start decorating, since I'm never going to get to leave, I think, resentfully. Or maybe I'll give it to Mr. Salzar. I wonder how many tubes of paint you could buy with $46. Not enough for a whole class, I guess, but some anyway. Then I remember what Poppy said about business and needing to sell as many tacos as we can. I know I complain about our Tia Perla a lot, but I guess I've never really thought about what we would do without her. I punch the cash button on the register, and when the drawer slides open, I leave the $50 bill inside. You might as well take this too, I whisper to her. Chapter 16 Eventually, the streetlights blink on, and a line begins to snake around the arena. The line around Tia Perla is almost as long. There's no way Poppy could have managed it without me. Four chicken tacos, two quesadillas, one steak burrito, hold the beans. I'm calling back orders and counting out change with hardly a break between customers. The dinner rush is such a whirl that I almost miss Amanda and Arthur jumping up and down, waving their arms from the middle of the line. I'm surprised at how glad I am to see them and surprised to see Arthur at all. I poke my head out the window and mouth, come over. We talk between orders. 
I thought you couldn't stand Viviana Vega, I tease Arthur. Pop trash, wasn't it? He sinks his hands into his pockets and looks away. Well, Ms. Barlow said if I wrote a music review for extra credit, she wouldn't, she wouldn't give me a detention for wearing my headphones in class again. Plus, it's a free ticket. Amanda pokes him in the shoulder. Whatever. We all know you're Viviana's biggest fan. And you're on a first name basis, Arthur pokes back. And just then, a black limousine pulls up in front of the arena. Amanda points. Think that's her? She asks, she asks breathlessly. No way, I answer. She wouldn't just walk in through the front door, would she? We watch as the driver gets out, walks around to, to the back of the limo. She opens the pet and opens the passenger door. Out steps Julia Sandoval, wearing a shimmering gold tank top and enormous sunglasses perched on her head. In case she has to hide from the paparazzi, Amanda jokes, obviously. We watch to see who she's with. Which lucky seventh grader gets to spend the evening with Julia Sandoval and her backstage passes? I'm guessing Maddie, but the next person out of the limo is Julia's little brother. And then her mom. Julia looks in Tia Perla's direction, but I can't tell if she sees us. She pulls her sunglasses over her eyes and walks towards the entrance with her family. Poppy comes over to the window with dinner bags for Amanda and Arthur. You two be careful in there, he tells them. Call us if you need anything. Estefania, you make sure that they have your phone number. Poppy, I whine. Oh, it's fine, Amanda says. My sister's going to wait for us, and Arthur has his mom's cell phone in case we need it. See, I want to say. Instead, I bite my tongue and wave goodbye to my friends. Amanda promises to buy me a program, and they hurry off to join the line. I turn around again and notice that Poppy has been watching me. He looks like he has something to say, but before he does, a face pops into the window. How fast can you get me a couple of tacos? I don't want to be late for the show. Poppy wipes his hands on the apron tied around his waist, tied around his waist and heads back to the grill. Two tacos, I say, coming right up. And that is the end of chapter 16. So is this book getting good or what? So it turns out Steph could not attend the concert, but it ends up that she's there anyway, selling tacos on her Tia Perla taco truck with her poppy. So stay tuned to find out what happens next. Have a good day.